This week on Dean Partridge's Canadian Whitetail. It's been a lot of years since I hunted first. Usually I'm the one running the camera, but there's a deer here I really want to take a look at and call him the fence line buck because he's been traveling down this fence line for the last four or five years I've been watching him. hours it's maybe 6 30. that's crazy we spend years watching deer mature and when one actually survives to the point where we want to hunt that deer we may spend hundreds of hours on stand hoping to get an opportunity at him but before that time on stand comes first we have to head in to get set up and this week we're looking for a deer that we'd simply nicknamed the fence line buck Setting up is easily my favorite time of the year. Packing the truck, planning, the whole process adds to the excitement and to the journey, especially when it's all done with one specific buck in mind. You head out knowing the more work you do now, the more chance of success in the fall. And I often wonder about all the ups and downs that we're preparing for. We just came in today to set up a stand, we call it the fence line blind because, well it's a fence line, but uh, there's a big channel coming out of about a three mile run of timber and this channel leads out to the fence and then there's a clear shot down this fence line and there's agricultural fields and alfalfa about half a mile down there. It's just a natural spot to set up for this channel because the deer they're going to want to travel that, that route of easiest resistance and uh, it's a spot that's produced for us a lot over the last few years and there's a giant buck here this year and he used to be a nine pointer then two years ago the winter just about killed him and last year he was a you know a really small scrubby buck this year he's back to normal and he's a huge 5x5 five five, one big curve brow time and his G3 on one side comes off kind of off the inside and off the base of his G2 and uh, that's a deer that I know we're really hoping to get a closer look at because there's no doubt that he's a shooter. So we'll get it all set up and hopefully in four weeks come hunting season, we're in the right spot to uh, try and get it done. As always, everyone's involved in the setup, even my young son Magnus. Everyone works together to prepare for the season and to make sure everything is just right, brushed in and the shooting lanes are clear. Well, the blind's in, we're all set up, and if you'll notice, we didn't put much brush up there because it's all hollow bush under there, so the more brush we put on there, the worse it looks. So we just laid up some dead logs to kind of break up the outline, and we should be ready to hunt. We're going to put our trail camera out and some Big and J so we can hopefully get some more pictures of that big buck that we're after. And uh, we had a trail camera here since May getting pictures of him, but that was further down the fence. We wanted to wait until the blind was in and set up before we kind of put any kind of attracted here or attracted any deer to this spot, because if they're attracted to this spot, then all of a sudden there's a new blind in the way. That's not what we want, but we should be good to go now and uh, hopefully in four weeks we're in the right spot. With the spot all set up and deer season now here and the fence line buck still making regular appearances on our trail camera, it was time to take a few shots to make sure the elite was still lined up and head in to hunt.
It's a very odd feeling for me to be headed out on day one, with my bow loaded in the truck instead of my camera gear to film someone else. So much so that I almost felt guilty, but it also felt great to feel that passion again, that drive to hunt one specific buck that I'd feared would fade after taking Droppy in 2012. This just reassured me that I was still in the game. Well, it's the first day of the 2014 whitetail season. It's actually the second day, but it's my first day. Last night we came to sit, but the wind was wrong and it was shifting all over the place, so we decided not to risk it. But it's been a lot of years since I hunted first. Usually I'm the one running the camera, but there's a deer here I really want to take a look at and we call him the fence line buck because he's been traveling down this fence line for about two miles back and forth out to some agricultural fields for the last four or five years I've been watching it. I don't know if it's gonna take one day or 90 days, but we're hoping that uh, the season will get a good look at him because he's, he's just a tremendous deer. So we've got about a mile walk to get in there and we're gonna head in and see what we make out. Temperature's nice and cool and should be a good day. about another mile to get out to the egg so we don't get a chance to film these deer in the summer that much because it's usually well past light before they get out to the egg so we, we kind of took up along this fence line. Last time I pulled the trail camera he was moving down on the other side of the fence where we had push in there too but I don't have to shoot down through the bar bar so hopefully he comes on our side of the fence. We put some big J out the other day on this side hoping that that'll keep him on this side when he's traveling down there so he'll stop and get some of that. There's a lot of other nice bucks in the area. There's, there's not a lot of does in this uh, in this spot. They seem to kind of stay on the field edge where the bucks are coming back and forth into the big timber here. So we'll just pit in and see how we may go. With anticipation high that all of our hard work would pay off at some point this season, it doesn't take long for this young buck to make an appearance. We just had a little buck come through here, and uh, there wasn't a lot of movement early on, but the temperature's coming down now. The leaves are falling like crazy. We've had quite a few frosts in the last few nights. So hopefully that'll get the older bucks moving, but I just forgot to see a deer this year so far. It was downright shocking to see this buck here at the fence line. He's a deer that we know well from a flax field over two miles away. Nevertheless, it was great to see him looking so good. An awful tempting if I didn't know that the fence line buck was in the area. Canadian. You're watching Dean Partridge's Canadian Whitetail, North America's premier wild whitetail show. Welcome back. Early in the evening, we'd already had several encounters with nice barks, including this young up-and-comer. The second the Flaxfield buck looked back like that, I knew. I knew someone was coming that he was worried about. Well, 
When this young muley buck appeared, I knew that wasn't what had the flash field buck's attention, and as my cameraman started to pan the camera to follow the mule deer, I told him to stop and keep the camera focused out the side of the blind, as I knew he was coming. And not a second later, there he was. The deer that we'd watched for years on camera and from afar, the king of that fence line was right here in the flesh at 16 yards on the very first day. When he walks in and all of the other bucks give him room, you know that he's the boss. Now out of velvet, I instantly recognized that he wasn't as heavy beamed as I'd originally thought, but it made no difference. I was getting ready. Just look at the size and depth of the body on this old buck, and definitely one of the most muscular deer that I've ever seen. Just a stunning animal. Two hours, it's maybe 6.30. Two hours into the season, we just took our target buck. That's crazy. There was another buck here. It's actually from about two miles away that we're hunting, and I have no idea why he showed up here. We weren't expecting that. He's a tall, narrow five, and he would have been a nice deer to take if I didn't know if that fence line buck was here. It went from no bucks to six bucks right in front of us, and that's a, that's a testament to those on us right there, because we were expecting him to come down the fence line with the rest of the bucks. For some reason, he came up out the outside of the edge of this bush. We're sitting here on a northwest wind. We're facing straight north, so our wind is going right to that edge. And he never even bothered. He walked up, he stopped, he watched the other deer. And that's what you'll almost always see those older bucks do, is they'll watch the other deer, see how they're reacting. That's a true testament to that deer, because this is probably one of the heaviest hunted areas that we do hunt. It's wide open public ground. And what's even worse is you can drive and hunt in here. So in rifle season, there's a lot of guys that drive these fence lines and drive around and shoot deer from the trucks. And uh, every year when rifle season opens, the fence line buck has disappeared. But it's September 16th, it's my first day hunting, and two hours in, we've got him down, I think, right beside the blind. That's incredible, I can't believe it. Welcome to this week's Canadian Whitetail Scouting segment. Locate, learn, set up, hunt. Brought to you by Big and J Long Range Attractants. The aroma is super strong. The range is super long. A common question we get into the show is how early before the season to set up stands and blinds, but that can be kind of tough to answer. We scout all year long, and what a deer is doing in August is not necessarily where it'll be in September. Right when seasons start to open up in the fall is also one of the times of big change for a whitetail as they shift from summer to fall routines. So setting up too early can be as big of a problem as setting up too late. I feel that you need to make that decision differently on each different buck, dependent upon what you know about that deer. Your history of the particular deer, or lack of, and knowledge of the area will largely dictate when it's best to get set up. In one situation, we may set up in the summer on a deer that we know, and know how he moves and transitions into fall. And the next setup may be the week before we hunt in November on a new buck that we have just found. In all cases, the one thing that stays true is you want to be set up as early as possible, but only once you're certain you know where you need to be. And that's your Canadian Whitetail Scouting segment for the week. This week's Canadian Whitetail Scouting segment has been brought to you by Big and J Long Range Attractants. Well, I'm pretty sure I seen him go down. We still gave him about half an hour, but we're gonna go take a look because I can only wait so long when I know that I see him go down. You know what the arrow looks like, Brennan? Looks like I think he went down right over there. But we'll go have a look. Look at here, the arrow landed just about exactly in the big and J that I put out on the fence line to try to keep him on this side of the fence line. So I didn't have to shoot through the barbed wire. You can see it right here, just zoom right in. So I need to thank some guys over at Big and J because I didn't want to try to weave on through that barbed wire. So let's go have a look. He's right on the edge. Oh, he's gorgeous. 
what a deer. What an incredible deer. I think that's like a two hour hunt this year. I can't even believe that it came together that fast. I don't know if it was good luck or good scouting, but I'll take it, either one. It's a gorgeous deer, it's tines this year. Every week they got longer and longer and you couldn't believe, I mean the G3, the G2's gotta be 12, the g is even longer on that other side. This G3 on this side grew off the inside of the beam this year, which was kind of neat. But, uh, I mean the beam, he's got long beams, they come in, they come forward and swoop back up and he's just a gorgeous deer that we were so fortunate to watch for a few years and I couldn't be happier. That's about the quickest hunt that I've ever had since I was 12 years old. We only hunted for a couple hours and we'll take it when it works out like that because quite often it doesn't work out like that. So he's a gorgeous deer. We're going to get him tagged up and get him out of here and what a year. Even after all these years, I still feel truly blessed every day that we're in the woods and have the chance to watch these deer mature. And I said at the beginning of the show that quite often it'll take us hundreds of hours in stand hoping to get that one opportunity at a target buck. But this week's episode just goes to show that sometimes it might only take two hours. Now I don't know if that's a result of watching this deer in proper scouting or just plain luck, but I do know that either way we'll take it. Thanks for watching this week's episode of Canadian Whitetail. For exclusive content, follow Dean and the team on Facebook, as well as on Instagram and Twitter, at Whitetail Dean. For Canadian Whitetail gear and apparel, visit CanadianHuntShop.com.